My sisters and brothers, good morning. Good morning. It's so wonderful for us to be here today to give glory and praise to our God as he has called forth these four men to be ordained as deacons for our church here in Pittsburgh and for the glory of God and service to the church universal. We gather and begin this celebration as we begin all of our prayers in the sign of God's love for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather today to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sinfulness, and let us ask our Lord for pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy.
Let us pray. O God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that these, your servants, whom you graciously chose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, summon the tribe of Levi and present them to Aaron the priest and his assistant. They shall discharge the oblig his obligation and those of the whole community before the meeting tent by serving at the dwelling. They shall have custody of all the furnishings of the meeting tent and discharge the duties of the children of Israel in the service of the dwelling. You shall give the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They have, they have then set aside from among the children of Israel as dedicated to me. The word of the Lord.
a, a, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, as in one body we have, have many parts, and all the parts do not have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually parts of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us exercise them. If, if prophecy in proportion to the faith, if ministry in ministering, if one is a teacher in teaching, if one exhorts in exhortation, if one contributes in generosity, if one is over others with diligence, if one does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Jesus answered Andrew and Philip, saying, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord.
those who are to be ordained come forward. Nicholas Clinton. John Ferguson. John Kist. Daniel Kushner. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. You know them to be worthy. After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those concerned with their formation, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and of our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these our brothers for the order of the diaconate. Once again, good morning, everyone. It's indeed a very glorious day for the Diocese of Pittsburgh as we gather as a faith community to celebrate the diaconate ordination of our brothers of Nick and John and John and Dan. In their name and on behalf of Bishop Zubik, of all the clergy and of the faithful of the Diocese of Pittsburgh, I would like to welcome everyone to St. Sebastian Church of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish. I would also like to welcome in a very special way the parents of Nick Clinton, Joel, and Lori, the parents of John Ferguson, Ray, and Kim, of John Kist, Tim, and Claire, and of Dan Kushner, Robert, and Marianne. I thank their parents for the gift of their sons to the church and we give thanks to God first and foremost for his gift of calling these men and sustaining them by the power of his grace throughout their years of formation. We give thanks to all those who have assisted and supported these men throughout their years of formation, the members of their home parishes, St. Martha and Mary Parish in the North Hills, All Saints Parish in Butler, St. Michael the Archangel Parish in Mount Lebanon, and St. Thomas the Apostle Parish in Munhall. To all those in the seminary staffs of the schools that they have attended, and to those in the formation office, we are very thankful for the support and encouragement that you have offered these men throughout the years. During the past year and a half as a bishop, I have celebrated about three dozen confirmations. And someone told me as I was preparing for today's ordination, that I should quiz these men just like we have quizzes at confirmation. (laughs) But in full disclosure, I have to tell you, as I've been celebrating confirmation, I have not been quizzing the candidates, rather I've been quizzing their sponsors. And so I think it might be appropriate today if I quiz their parents, since since they indeed were the first teachers in the ways of the faith. But don't worry, parents, Uh, I know how anxious and excited that you are about your son's ordination, so I won't put you on the spot. 
But the questions I've been asking the sponsors as I've been celebrating confirmation is this. Of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, which do you hope that your candidate receives the fullest of, is ready to really share with abundant grace and will change their life completely? And I tell the sponsors that the gifts are wisdom, understanding, knowledge, counsel, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. So no matter which answer they give, they, they can't be wrong. Gentlemen, Nick and John and John and Dan, you've received the same gift at your baptism and you received it at your confirmation. And now that you are ordained deacons, I ask the Holy Spirit to help you to live out these gifts as you serve the Lord in faith and charity. These gifts will be the mark of your service. First off, wisdom. To know the importance of keeping God as the first priority of your life. To judge the events of your lives according to your belief in God. Understanding. To know the meaning of God's word. The sacred scriptures will continue to nourish you as you touch the lives of others in service. Knowledge to think and to pray about the mysteries of God and of our faith and to convey that knowledge to others. Counsel, to know and to follow God's plan, especially when you seem to have other choices. Fortitude, to have the courage to do what is right, to stand up for the truth and the strength to follow God's plan. Piety, to be men of prayer, listening to the Lord as you try to serve him and do his will. Fear the Lord, to live each day doing God's will, giving glory to the Lord that you may never be separated from him. You are here today because you answered God's call to service in his church. You have responded to his call to be a priest in his church, and this ordination to the diaconate is a step in responding to that call. Until you are, God willing, ordained to the priesthood, you are called as deacons to proclaim the word of God, to serve God's people in faith and charity. You may think at this point that you know everything. After all these years of seminary formation, what more could you possibly learn? And I said this last year at the diaconate ordination, and I think it needs repeating. People, um, People at, you might need to think that you have to tell everybody everything that you know, but people don't really want to know everything that you, that you know. What they want is for you to know their names. They want you to know who they are. People want you to know the joys and the blessings of their lives. They want you to celebrate their marriage. They want to rejoice with them in the gift of the baptism of their children. They want to celebrate their blessings and life fixed moments, graduations, promotions, anniversaries. People want you to know their sorrows and to offer them comfort over the death of a loved one, over the prognosis of a life-threatening disease, to, to offer support when disappointments arise in their lives. People want you to offer them hope that as you share the faith with them, the kingdom of God is continuing to grow. You're called to be a service to God's people. The service, as our Lord has shown us, requires getting your hands dirty. You have shared with me that during your pastoral years, you had the opportunity to shovel snow at your parishes, to help up the, set up the parish halls for various events and festivals, to work among the faithful. With your ordination, this will continue. And hopefully, you'll also use your hands to feed the hungry and to give drink to the thirsty. As you work in the food banks, as you work with the Ladies of Charity, as you work with our St. Vincent de Paul societies, you'll be called to visit the sick, the homebound, and the imprisoned of our diocese. The Lord has called you to share your gifts and your talents with his people. You have to know your people whom you're called to serve and to recognize in them the presence of God. Holy Mother Church has this to offer to you. 
My dearly beloved brothers and sisters, since these men are sons and your relatives and friends are soon to be advanced to the order of deacons, consider carefully the nature of the ministerial rank to which they shall be raised. Strengthened by the gift of the Holy Spirit, they will help the bishop and his priests in the ministries of the word of the altar and of charity, showing themselves to be servants of all. As ministers of the altar, they will proclaim the gospel, prepare the sacrifice, and distribute the body and blood of the Lord to the faithful. At the bishop's direction, it will also be their duty to exhort believers and unbelievers alike and instruct them in the holy doctrine, to preside over public prayer, administer baptism, assist at and bless marriages, bring viaticum to the dying, and conduct funeral rites. Consecrated by the laying on of hands passed down from the apostles and bowed more closely to the service of the altar, they will carry out a ministry of charity in the name of the bishop or the pastor. In all these duties, let them act with the help of God in such a way that you will recognize them as disciples of him who did not come to be served, but to serve. Now, beloved sons, you are to be raised to the order of the diaconate. The Lord has given you an example that just as he himself has done, so you also should do. And so, as deacons, that is, ministers of Jesus Christ who appeared in the midst of the disciples as one who serves, do the will of God in charity from the heart. Serve others with joy as you would serve the Lord. Since, in fact, no one can serve two masters, look upon all impurity and greed as serving false gods. Since you present yourselves for the order the diaconate of your own free choice, you must be like those once chosen by the apostles for the ministry of charity, men of good reputation, full of wisdom and the Holy Spirit. You will exercise your ministry in a celibate state. Celibacy is both a sign of pastoral charity and incentive to it, as well as the source of spiritual fruitfulness for the world. For urged by a sincere love of Christ, the Lord, in living in this state with total dedication, you will cling more readily to Christ with an undivided heart. You'll devote yourselves with greater freedom to the service of God and others, and you will serve him single-mindedly in the work of spiritual rebirth. Firmly planted and grounded in faith, show yourselves without blemish and beyond re reproach before God and others as is proper for ministers of Christ and the stewards of God's mysteries. Do not allow yourselves to be turned away from the hope of the gospel, which you must not only hear, but also serve. Hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience and express by your actions the word of God, which your lips proclaim, so that the Christian people brought to life by the Spirit may become a pure offering accepted by God and so that you yourselves, when you go out to meet the Lord on the last day, may be able to hear him say, well done, good and faithful service, enter into the joy of your Lord. Dear sons, before you proceed to the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your resolve to undertake this office. Do you resolve to discharge with humble charity the office of the diaconate so as to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? I do. Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience, as the apostle says, and to proclaim this faith by word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition. You are, you are prepared to embrace the celibate state. 
Do you resolve to keep this commitment perpetually as a sign of the dedication of your life to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven and service to God and of others? I do. Do you resolve to guard and increase the spirit of prayer proper to your way of life and in keeping with this spirit in the circumstances of your life to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world. Do you resolve to conform your manner of life always to the example of Christ, whose body and blood you will handle at the altar? Do you promise respect and obedience? Nick, do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. John, do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. John, do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Dan, do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Let us pray, dearly beloved, that God, the Almighty Father, will in his mercy pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants, whom he is pleased to receive into the order of the diaconate. Let us kneel. of that. 
Antioch. Pray for us. St. Lawrence. Pray for us. St. Vincent. Pray for us. St. Perpetua and St. Felicity. and St. Dominic, pray for us. St. Francis Xavier, pray for us. St. John Vianney, pray for us. St. Catherine of Siena, pray for us. St. Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. Sisty Sales, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Calcutta, pray for us. Saint John Aloysius Gonzaga, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Sweden, pray for us. Saint Nicholas, pray. The desert, pray for us. Saint John Bosco, pray for us. Saint John of the Cross, pray for us. Saint Isaac Jodes and Companions, pray for us. Saint Therese of Lisieux, pray for us. Saint John Paul the Second. Pray for us, Saint Sebastian. Pray for us, all holy men and women, saints of God. Pray for us, Lord, be merciful. Consecrate these chosen men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort all the 
troubled and afflicted with your mercy. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and kindly accompany with your help what we are about to do by virtue of our office. Sanctify with your blessing those whom in our judgment we believe are worthy to be offered for the exercise of sacred ministries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand. Draw near, we pray, Almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office. While remaining unchanged, you will make all things new, and setting all things in order with everlasting providence, you make due provisions for every age, through your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that your church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of her members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build a new temple. As once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish these ranks of ministries and their sacred offices to serve your name. Thus, in the first days of your church, your son's apostles, led by the Holy Spirit, appointed seven men of good repute 
to help them in the daily ministry that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and the preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted these chosen men the ministry at serving at table. Look favorably also upon these your servants, we pray, O Lord, whom we humbly dedicate to serve at your holy altars in the office of the diaconate. Send forth the Holy Spirit upon them, O Lord, we pray, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace to carry out faithfully the work of this ministry. May the evangelical spirit abound in them, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and the poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your precepts shine forth in their conduct that by the example of their manner of life, they, may, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a good conscience, may they remain firm and steadfast in Christ, so that imitating your son on earth, who came not to be served, but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign with him in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Nick, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. John, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. John, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, 
and practice what you teach. Dan, receive the gospel of Christ whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your name, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all the holy church. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so to set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant and by your wondrous designs were pleased to decree the many ministries to be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chose his men to become shares in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to be leaders of your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word, and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that, that you accept, bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, William and William, his assistants, me, your unworthy servant, those who hold to the those to those holding to the truth, handed on to the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal King, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, 
and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clemens, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for these your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of the diaconate. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that they, what they have received by divine commission, they may fully, they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve these offerings in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised up to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as ones who are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your angel on your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, may receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, and may be filled with every heaven. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, 
hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. For whom you continue to make all these things good, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of the intercession of the Lord, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants, whom you have replenished with the heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel of the sacraments of charity, through Christ our Lord. So Deacon Nick, Deacon Ferg, Deacon John, Deacon Cush. Last evening when we had uh, the beautiful opportunity to be with your families and close friends and all of our brother seminarians, I asked you the question, do you have the heart for others? Do you have Christ's heart for others? And today, you gave your profound yes. And on behalf of all the faithful of the Diocese of Pittsburgh, and certainly in my own name, I'm so grateful for your witness and for your yes. And so in response to your rest, to your yes, I uh, grant to you the full faculties for all deacons of the Diocese of Pittsburgh, so there would be no question in anybody's mind that you're for real, you're authentic, and you can get to work immediately. <laughs> and so to prove that, I uh, also want to be able to present to you with, with your first assignment as an ordained minister of the church. Dear Deacon Clinton, with the Church of Pittsburgh, I rejoice in your ordination as a deacon and thank God for your response to his call to serve the church. Your ordination is a blessing for you in a time of genuine celebration for our whole diocesan family. It is with great joy that I assign you to Triumph of the Holy Cross Parish, Clariton. <laughs> Cheering sessions most welcome. <laughs> Jefferson Hills, Pleasant Hills, West Mifflin, effective Monday, June 12, 2023. Nick, congratulations and thank you. Deacon Ferguson, it is with great joy that I assign you to Resurrection Parish, Bethel Park, Upper St. Clair, effective Monday, June 12th, 2023, for congratulations. Deacon Kist, it is with great joy that I assign you to St. Catholic Drexel Parish South. <laughs> kind of seeing one of those meters going back and forth. <laughs> Southeast Washington County and St. James Parish, Western Washington County, effective Monday, June 12, 2023.
And Deacon Kushner, it is with great joy that I assign you to Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish. <laughs> Observatory Hill, Perrysville, Ross, Westview, effective Monday, June 12, 2023. God bless you, Kush. Thanks. And so as the words are filled with wisdom, may God who has begun this good work in you truly bring it to fulfillment. Amen. Amen. Friends, as a pastor of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish, uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome you here today, and um, I hope you had a great time. And in the spirit of the occasion, we have a reception planned, and uh, so it's out on the front porch of the church. So when you go down the aisle and just keep going through doors, if you get to McKnight Road, you've gone too far. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And with your Bow down for the blessing. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. Amen. Amen. May he who has entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to his word to be sincere and fervent witnesses. Amen. May he who has appointed you stewards of his mysteries make you imitators of his son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be 